All right, appears to be recording. Yeah, a new beginning. Hey, I like that intro. It appears to be recording. All right, yes, draft science, um, video presentation. I have that part. Um, all right, let's just get to it. It's just, it's just getting so annoying. This conversation with humans. It's such a pointless exercise. But anyway, um, it's the only game in town. Talking to the bugs, won't well, the, the actual bugs. I mean, we're you know close enough. But there are real bugs, and I could talk to them, but, you know, none of them speak English, so I'm really out of luck. Anyway, uh, Google's evil, um, just for so many reasons, right? But even simple things, like somebody posted my real name in a comment, and they don't give you the option to just say the person's doxing, you know, in the comment. They're posting somebody's um, personal information. It's not one of the options, the reporting options. And you can't report a channel for the comments it makes. You can only report the videos. You can't report the channel based on the comments the person's making. It just doesn't make any sense at all. It's just too stupid a system. And that's why it doesn't work. And they know it doesn't work. And they don't care that it doesn't work because noise is money. Um, error code is money for them. You clicking on the wrong thing is money for them. It's all money for them. They make money on the accidents. They're worse than am ambulance chasers. You know, because they make the accidents. They make money on every part of um, bullshit. So anyway, so yes, Google's evil. Um, Baldy Cats is, is such a cowardly douche. Again, uh, the simple, all the little friends of his, all the shills. So none of these people know that I've made just a simple little request. You know, all you have to do is give me a link to a video where the double slit is explained accurately. That's all. It's not that big a challenge. You know, where they apply this wave theory in some sort of rational way. Okay, you know, in some, and I'd say rational in the sense that, uh, you know, the, the way the math is and the way the drawings are, are inconsistent. They draw these two waves that are interfering with each other when the math is saying the two waves have to be here. And they have to be here. They have to be here. The center of the wave has to be here. That's what the math says. So show me the video where the math doesn't say that. And that's accurate. And show me the picture of the double slit drawn, you know, rationally. See, I could put the little impediment in here, you know, because it's half over the impediment also. But I'm just showing the single slit as an example. You know, this is where the waves are. The point sources are the distance. The distance is identifying where the point sources are. That's what the distance is for. <laughs> it's telling you how many wavelengths are in there. Anyway. But it doesn't make any rational sense. These are the point sources. So how does the center of the wave, with your little Huygens theories, how does that, how does that work? How, does, how do waves do that? How do they jump over the side of the surface? Simple question. But anyway, just, just link me to the video where it's done right. Um, you know, that you'll, you'll stake your reputation on the um, correctness and accuracy and um, sensibleness of the theory presented. What's the, so, that's not asking too much. You know, you can't show me one professor doing a double slit experiment where they actually can explain the real pattern, not the imagined one or the fake one or the in one circumstance one, but the real pattern. So that's all. They're too cowardly to show that they can demonstrate me to be wrong, that I'm unworthy, uh, you know, of a response because I'm a, some sort of despicable character. And besides, my physics is garbage. Well, why don't you demonstrate it with something real, a real counter argument, which none of these assholes make. So anyway, so we'll get the Piro. So he left this douchebag, silly, nonsensical comment. <laughs> you know, it's just so stupid. Anyway, it's amazing how confused you are about two waves through one slit issue. Yeah, I think two waves through one slit, that's not exactly the, the story. The story is that somehow one slit makes two waves. 
that's your theory, shit for brain. Okay, so you're the one that's being rather amazing. Um, all right, and you know, just a junk comment. I mean, just useless tripe. I mean, if I, I could post that on anybody's video, it's just horseshit nonsense. It's just trolling, triggering. He doesn't watch any of these videos. He doesn't even understand the arguments being made. He's just so clueless. Um, and he's such a coward also, again. Yeah. I, I invited him to a Skype. Let's do a Skype room, okay? And I'll ask you some fucking questions that you'll have no fucking way of answering. <laughs> and that'll be the video. And what would your understanding be exactly? So this guy's asking him. A literal infinite number of wave fronts. So again, that's their theory, their Huygens theory. And it is kind of silly and baby talk. An infinite number of something in a confined space is just kind of a nonsensical starter. Um, where every point is a wave front. Yes, yeah, so somehow every point on the wave somehow it has infinite energy too to make infinite numbers of new waves. Um, <laughs> and the secondary wavelets uh, emulating, emanating from different points somehow nah, mutually interfere. Well, somehow the only two that don't get somehow negated as you know, just as much constructive as destructive or whatever their theory is, or somehow the only ones left over are the two ones at the point sources. Isn't that convenient? I, I eliminated all the others. As I pointed out, you can do that elimination thing both ways. You can create just as much destructive as constructive. The fact is, is that everything gets thrown on the, the wall. And there's places where you have, you know, your checkers. You're throwing red and black checkers, let's say. Yeah, there's places where you throw two blacks, and there's places where you throw two reds, and there's places where you throw a red and a black. But that's it. There's nothing mysterious or magical about any of it. All right. So just a stupid fucking comment. After all this time, I mean, it's this something so trivial, so useless. I mean, what the fuck? It's just ugh, shameful. All right, uh, thanks for the explanation. We did that already. Um, electrical engineers obviously know more about it than you want to be. Whatever this is, tough physics six guys. I don't even know what that means. That's why Lewin apologized at last. See, these people are so fucking dumb. So this was the electric boom uh, controversy. And um, clearly Lewin didn't apologize. I mean, this is just so funny. I mean, electric boom kind of just said, okay, fuck it, we're not gonna argue anymore. But what Lewin said was, I'm sorry you're as dumb as a flat earther. That's not an apology, retard. I mean, how dumb are you? You can't follow along at all. Do you really think it's an apology if I say, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry you're as retarded as, I don't know, a poo-eating shrimp? I mean, wh what the fuck? You would say, thank you? Uh, I appreciate you, um, you know, admitting you're wrong? Oh. people watching professional science argue with flat earth i mean let's just point out again you know it's this whole these people and this fucking racism <laughs> you know his name was like whatever Allah baba um you know everybody's just ethnic all over the fucking place lewin's obsessed with the, the whatever dutchness and um you know dutch scientists were brilliant why he's so obsessed with Huygens, you know, I mean, it's just so bad, and so the other guys, whatever, Iraqi, and so, um, you know, the Muslims gotta say, yeah, it's just so bad, anyway, watching professional science arguing with flat earthers is like watching a war between China and uh, Tuvalu, or whatever, isn't that the one Feynman went to, or something, it's been wasted a whole bunch of time going to some douchebag shithole. 
Everyone knows in advance who is going to win, yet it's still somehow entertaining for a lot of people. It's just very tragic. If the government of whatever, I don't think Tuvalu had a government much, uh, started claiming that, uh, was more powerful and influential and it changed how many people would believe it. Uh, I don't even know why they're, you're putting it in that kind of terms, but obviously beating up flat earthers is just lame as fuck. I think this Mickey Farley dude is jealous. <clears throat> well, whatever. Uh, what's the point in psychoanalyzing him? He's obviously extremely butthurt. Um, I apparently offended him at his very soul in some way. I you know, called him too fat or something. I insulted something about him that just really, just you can't get over it. Maybe it's your height or something else. Well, whatever, I don't, you know, who cares? It's obviously insanely personal. And so Dave is calling him a girl. Well, whatever. He's certainly a coward, <laughs> you know. Apparently he's now stolen my graph physics name and icon and is doing that impersonation thing. You know, it's just so tacky. These are the, then this is the kind of tacky person and tacky tactics that Stephen Bro thinks there's yeah, that's the way to go. Thanks a lot for being there to impersonate somebody else's identity. So bad. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna remove it. Uh, anyway. I mean, everybody's comments are just crap. I certainly don't mean to diminish the study of how light works, so apologies for my poor choice of words. And my jab about not really relevant to me wasn't about light, but about the pointless attempts to discredit you. Well, you didn't really say that. What I should have said about it, <clears throat> the light debate was that I really don't have enough of the prerequisite education to keep up with the conversation yet. You know, that's the part I don't really understand. It's not that complicated. I mean, understanding the difference between some notion of water waving because it's a non-compressible substance and it has to, you know, move the pressure by moving into some place that has less pressure, the atmosphere. Um, <laughs> you know, or even understanding how a piece of steel might, a vibration might move through the atoms of the steel and understanding bullets, you know, fired from a gun and that you can fire them all at the same time and that row of bullets would go and then you could fire another row of bullets understanding the difference between a wave you know that is in the substance in the connectedness of the molecular substance and the idea of just individual particles just happening to be uh, doing something collectively by accident like two people could walk out of their front doors and walk to their car and get in their car and drive out their driveway and it would look like the two events are connected but they don't have to be connected at all anyway um, what you should have what I should have said about the light debate was I don't really have enough okay uh, to keep up the conversation yet so I can't really contribute or even coherently inquire about the topic. Well, see, I guess I just really don't understand that. I mean, their theory is is that two fucking waves come out of something, and the waves magically somehow forces. I mean, that we know forces. Oh, we never saw this. <laughs> so I laugh. I laugh at the idea that you didn't see the drawing from before. Um, but anyway, that, that you know, and, and I've sort of pointed out for you, there's nothing curved in real physics. There's none of this stuff. It's point sources and straight lines. You know, a piece of the photon goes this way one second. The next second, the next piece goes this way. The next piece goes this way. Another piece goes that way. All right, that there are straight lines and that we collect the pieces over a certain amount of time. Okay, and... Um, you know, we're just collecting a frequency and that you could understand that um, this idea that this one's traveling further and this one's traveling a less distance and so their timing will be off. So one that came at T1 will interact with one that was at T5, you know, and those two will end up hitting a point, okay, uh, at the same time or in sequence like a photon. 
okay, with a frequency. Again, this isn't that complicated, right? I mean, it's a frequency and it's a polarization, which just means you're firing the bullets. I mean, I've done this analogy. You're firing bullets one every half second, and then you move your gun up. up. You start here, you move the gun as you're going up, like electricity would be traveling through something. So the electricity goes this way, it fires a bullet, and then it fires another bullet, like this bullet is here. The next bullet's fired here. You know, and the next bullet, you know, well, let's say, you know, and that's the sequence. One of them's in this place, one of them's in this place, one of them's in this place in space. And they're all going the same speed this way. And so that creates a frequency. When it hits this wall, the wall will be hit, and then the wall will be hit a little time later, and then the wall will be hit a little another time later. And the wall will react by creating electrical signal. I mean, damn it. You're saying you can't follow along, and their theory is this wacky thing, like some kind of gigantic wave. The polarization is thousands of atoms, and the electron is like the smallest thing in the universe, just about. I mean, the force is obvious, the little force bits that make the light are much smaller, but I'm just saying electrons are really, 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 really small. I mean, a million times, a million times, probably a billion times actually, I have to put a few more zeros, a billion frickin' times smaller than this thing, and this thing is going to create a whole, it's going to do a whole photon thing, or it's going to do this, or it's going to do that, how's this whole thing hit this thing, can't happen, you can't understand those arguments, come on, their theory is garbage, doesn't make any sense, all right, the sheer number of different studies that it seems to take, uh, not just particle phys physics, but also optics, lasers, mirrors, crystals. Yeah, the whole point is, is that it's all the same thing, though. All you're doing is saying, look, the little tiny bit moves the electron. When the electron moves, it moves other little force bits, right? I mean, I've given the analogy. If I'm moving away from you, you could understand less light can reflect off of me. and I essentially become invisible if I go fast enough. And the opposite happens if I move towards you. More light hits me. I become more and more opaque, brighter and brighter. And that's what's moving between atoms. I mean, it's all ping pong balls and ping pong paddles. It's not that fucking complicated. If I have a whole structure of paddles that are already set up and they have ping pong balls bouncing between them, and then the external universe throws a couple of new balls into the game and moves the paddle a little closer. Well, yeah, that's going to move this paddle. That's going to move this paddle. It's going to move that paddle. What is so fucking hard about understanding this shit? Damn it. Anyway, so I leave that to you. Eh. That's all I meant. Anyways, thanks again for taking the questions. Yeah, well, you know, I just don't know if they're, <laughs> you know, I just don't know if there's, like I say, there's just, this is, as a civilian conversation, it, there's kind of no point. Because it really does require that you be able to understand something about mechanics. You know, something about pool tables and ping pong paddles. And if you can't follow along that much, you know, we're really not going anywhere. All right, perv action. So this will just irritate the fuck out of me too. So the photon travels on the z-axis. Yes, the composite of bullets is going in a direction. Um, has a length on the y-axis. I don't know. Does it? It's moving z. Let's say y is this way. Uh, so yeah, they're out of alignment this way. Okay, and uh, doesn't spread on the x-axis. That's right, they're still very small. Okay, they're not spreading this way. The gun is only moving up and down. It's like electricity. Again, electricity is going through atoms, so it's shaping, you know, it's pushing the force between the paddles. One paddle gets hit, the other paddle moves, then the next paddle moves, then the next paddle moves. And that's sort of how electricity moves through a conductor and the point is some of the atoms in that process okay the electrons move in a certain way and it creates a reflection of a little little change okay in 
what the universe sees, and so it's creating the photon in the same way. That's why the photon has frequency and polarization. It's because as the electricity travels, it's shooting the electron sideways. So one, one, I mean the, the photon, the quanta of the photon, the pieces of the photon. So the first gun fires, then the next gun fires, then the next gun fires. And you can understand that the bullets are all a distance from each other. So I compared it to an envelope in the sense that this is sort of the shape of a photon. It comes at you, okay, as an object that has a length. There's a number of bullets that were fired, all right, and that they're have a polarization dependent on the speed of light or the speed of electricity through atoms. Anyway, what's le what, what, what leads pointed you to that conclusion? I mean, what does that question even mean? Obviously, the, the evidence points me to it. The, all the evidence indicating that light is a particle. Well, it's particles. A photon is a composite object at a frequency. Shit. I mean, I've been over this so many times. And now it explains gravity, because if I have that little, if that photon isn't very long, nothing can receive it. Nothing can give us an indication of it. We can't measure it. And so it could be the very force known as gravity. And how does it happen? Well, I've been over that in the videos. I mean, this is just so irritating. So what video is this on? I mean, if it's on the explanation video, I'm just going to delete it. Because it's just, yeah, yeah. The, the video explains all of this. And you're pretending it doesn't? I'm sorry. It's just too stupid. That's what I'm going to say. It's too stupid. What the hell is this crap? I didn't ask you to do that stinking, lousy, crappy YouTube. Does this fucking haven't responded to yet? There's these default things that are just so fucking annoying. All right, all right, all right. So yeah, there it is. So I don't know, you know, whatever. You you can't understand. I I mean, really, I I, I can't I can't. Met, the bullet metaphor is so simple. The gun moves, bang, bang, bang. You can't understand what would end up traveling through space. Shit. All right, whatever. 370,000 morons. Uh, show screen grad displaying subscriber button. Yeah, well, I don't know why that's interesting, but I guess I'll leave it there. I mean, it's frightening. You know, 370,000 people are watching, are subscribed to a channel that just picks on people who are mentally ill, essentially. All right, there is no point responding because you delete all comments which point out the flaws in your logic. Well, I can't delete other people's videos. I can't delete this. I can't. So why don't you make a rational argument somewhere? So you don't do any of this crap, you lying sack of shit. I mean, I ask you to post a link to the video you're saying is doing right. So post me a link to the two-slit experiment done right. Post me a link to a rational explanation of how a magnet works, retard. And I'll play the fucking video and point out how it's not a rational explanation. Mine is. In any case, you're just such cowards. I mean, you, you know, 15, you know, one-day-old account, of course. In any case, I now <clears throat> derive more pleasure by seeing you flounder around in the dark. Yeah, well, whatever. These are just mushy words. You're not backing it up with anything. You're not explaining how I'm wrong about a damn thing. And you're certainly not explaining how they're right about a damn thing. You're just such a little coward. Enjoy the little echo chamber with your philosophy groupies. Well, obviously, I'm not enjoying it, am I, asshole? I'm not really interested in groupies, am I, asshole? I'm offering $1,500 to one of these scientists on the internet to sit there and make a fool out of me. And I can't bribe them to do it? You're, you're a little icons of your little fucking religion? I'm asking your fucking preachers to explain the origins of your god. And uh, they can't put up, they can't take on the devil. <laughs> They're scared. 
Oh, you're such a piece of shit. And yet he's quite vocal about wanting to have a debate with professionals on camera. Yes, yeah. I'm not afraid of you. Oh, you want to come into the room and explain? You want to answer my fucking questions and show me your evidence? I'm willing. Skype me, asshole. Do not God on Skype, okay? Uh, I post the email address. Send me an email, okay, indicating you can make a fucking argument and that you have some sort of evidence and some sort of reasoning and some sort of logic to present. And I'll give you the opportunity to show me to be whatever you're claiming I am, you frickin' goddamn coward. Ugh. People are just such filth. Anyway, garbage. So, you know, this is like three, what, one troll, maybe. Uh, this is brilliant stuff, well explained, logical, consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's um, Ujima Flipper, uh, Skid Row Radio. <laughs> he changed his name a couple of times. Uh, he once sent me a book full of woo. <laughs> you know, physics woo. Um, I thanked him for it, but I mean, it was just crap. So, I, you know, I am convincing him that maybe all of those fairy tales are just that fairy tales. All right, so another comment. I really just can't say thank you uh, because it's just too irritating. So complementary waves don't actually cancel one another. They don't exist. On, on the nuclear level, there's no fucking such thing as a wave because there's no fucking such thing as an ether. It's not jello mechanics all the way down. Okay, the fact that the ocean is full of molecules that are sticking to each other doesn't mean the whole universe is full of crap that's stuck to itself. Oh, shit. I mean, I've made this point over and over and over again. You haven't picked up in the thousand videos I've made that I have a bit of hostility towards the concept of a fucking wave as a physics concept. Uh, it's a chemistry concept. Right. With one another, okay, actually cancel one another out. That's right. There's no canceling anything. You can't cancel energy. You can just divert it. And they're not diverted by banging into each other because forces do not interact with forces. Forces only interact with matter. All right, it's just that we are unable to see into the small enough tiny verse to quantify the two waves still moving parallel. They're not moving parallel. I don't what are you even talking about? The whole point of the experiment is things aren't moving parallel. Uh, they can't start at different locations and arrive at the same location and be parallel. Uh, to one another. Since the two waves, so she just keeps doing a, a force, whatever that, no, there's no waves of force, don't actually interact with one another. What we're actually perceiving as the cancellation of matter is really the point at which the most action between the waves and force is happening. No. Whatever that rambly crap is. No, 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 no. God damn it. I use the word constructive reconstruction. I've used the word breaking. I've used the word scatter. The fucking thing is broken. The photon is a concept, as something in order, as an envelope, is broken. A piece goes over here. A piece goes over there. A piece goes over there. They go to different fucking places. And when they arrive at those places, pieces from other locations are also arriving and you uh, incidentally put the pieces back together. You put an A block and a B block and a C block back together and you remake a photon. That's it. Alright, thanks for the video. Well, whatever. Thanks for the video again. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm really just not interested. Uh, you should slightly... 
you sound slightly pissed off throughout the whole video. Yeah, that's right. It's really irritating to have to explain ping pong paddles to people 17 times. It's really not that fucking complicated. Okay, <laughs> do you have any evidence for any of the... Yes, all of the fucking evidence, you dumb fuck. And it's in the fucking videos. The evidence, the experiments, the results, the consequences are in the fucking videos, you fucking asshole. There's a fucking pattern. There's a mathematical formula. Do you understand that the mathematical formula for the single fucking goddamn slit, you fucking dumb shit, is this and this. This is the distance, asshole. Do you understand that? Do you understand that this is a point source? Here and here. That's the fucking math, shit for brain. Now explain how a wave goes here and here. How does the center of the wave, which has to be the center of the point source, dumb ass, how does that possibly go over the surface, you stupid fucking hunk of shit. Can you explain that? How does that exactly work? And then the double slit, you have the waves going over the single impediment, okay, and over the edges of the surfaces. Now, how does that work? And only four point sources can explain the double slit, so two fucking waves interfering can't explain the two patterns in the double slit experiment. Do you understand that, you stupid pile of fucking shit? Do you have any counter-argument to those points, you shithead? I'm the one arguing the evidence, shithead. Your physicists are the one who are making up evidence, saying there was, oh, we did an experiment with detector. They never did it, shithead. Can you find the detecting experiment? We detected an electron. You can't do it. Again, you can't even bounce a photon off of an electron realistically. Do you understand? The photon's polarization is 2,000 atoms high, okay? It's huge. 2,000 atoms high. How can that bounce off of an electron, which is a million times smaller than a fucking atom? God damn it. Yeah, I'm slightly pissed off. Because you people are just evidence that the human race is crap. It's made of shit. Not a single person can use any kind of reasoning skills at all. You're all fucking too stupid to understand ping pong paddle and ball bouncing back and forth. And that, oh, I bring the paddles twice as close, the ball would hit twice as many times. You're too fucking stupid to even understand that. Do you have any evidence? Yes, all of the evidence. Every fucking experiment ever conducted can be explained, okay, with this simple model. All right, any of the things you are saying here, or are you taking sh sheet, talking shit? You can't even say shit, as usual. Yeah, fuck you. You're the one talking shit. Will you show up? Will you do a Skype room, you little coward? You're talking shit. Will you back it up with something, shit for talker? Huh? Anything at all? You got any chance at all? Oh, man, you people are just such garbage. Who the fuck is FYI? Who the fuck is this piece of shit? This one day old account crap. Another useless sack of shit account. Yeah, August 17th. Amazing. Amazing bullshit. Yeah, well, fuck that. Uh, report users being too fucking stupid. It's not on here. Too fucking stupid isn't on here. Really should be. <laughs> yeah. Well, yo, know, it's he's endangering children. I think. Um. Yeah, they can't say much about it. All right, so I won't bother. But, I mean, it's just, this is just such a waste of time that they, YouTube lets this garbage just float all over this fucking website. This stupid, idiotic, crappy, one-day-old fucking moron accounts. Alright, so just block it again. Uh, report block user. Yes. Oh, yes, I have to confirm it. 
fuck that shit. It's just such puke. These people are just such garbage. So they're proving my point, right? I mean, people argue that there's something about the human race worth preserving, that anybody should ever have another child, another moron to add to the fucking pile of morons on this planet, the Muslims, the, you know, the Christians, the quantum mechanicists, <laughs> the wavicles. I mean, they're all so full of fucking shit. Ugh. All right. So, now on to Stephen Bro, a fucking lying sack of smelly, dirty, crappiest shit. Where the hell did he go? I knew he was here somewhere before. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, Mystery of Light? No. No. There we go. Alright, so he types all this bullshit. He's bragging about this, you know, old news. So he whatever, this is a clip from a video obviously, at least two years old um, and um, on the subject of now paramagnetism and diamagnetism, so he makes all these arguments about the double slit and yet he now just changes the subject so instead of backing up what he said on those subjects, he just changes the subject to another subject and he uses these, this bullshit rhetoric you know, types this bullshit in capital letters like he's proving something. He hasn't proven anything uh, at all. Uh, so I guess my drawing wasn't exactly in the video. <laughs> um, so look, the intent here is to persuade Gary to stop making false pseudo-scientific uh, claims versus what uh, kind of claims. So you actually believe in the Huygens principle. What, do you believe in? You believe there's an infinite number of little wavelets making all the other waves. Um, what what kind of you think a single slit creates two waves? Just happens to work out that way, even though water doesn't do that. Um, you think there's such a thing as a virtual photon? You think there's such a thing as a bent space? What are you defending? You won't say what you're defending, you fucking lying piece of shit. And let's understand. He's already admitted in his in these these four hundred. Uh, word, I mean, the sentence uh, comments he makes all over the sloppy uh, verse, um, you know, making all these bold and shitty claims. Um, he's already admitted, okay, that he had the agenda. He, you know, he, he didn't do my experiments with any kind of sincerity. He, his whole effort was to prove me wrong. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to, you know, do the experiment to see if, what the truth was. He fully believed I was wrong. So what the fuck? He's just such a liar. All right, um, stop making false. Okay, so he hasn't proven these false things. I mean, beyond the fact that the channel is called Draft Physics, and I've obviously been figuring it out as I go along. So yes, I have made some mistakes in the past. Um, but uh, I would argue that 90% of the content, or 85% or whatever you want to say, um, of the basic elemental stuff, the point that it's a particle universe, that the universe is made of force and matter, and the force tells the matter where to go. There's no magical bent anything that's doing anything. Um, misinforming people who have no clue just how, again, this is in, who gives a shit about the stupid little fucking uh, tiny audience? That's not the subject here, jackass. The subject is between your capacity to make a reasonable argument. I don't care about the goddamn fucking subscribers. I don't care about the fucking general public's opinion. It's irrelevant. It doesn't mean anything. I care about you making counter arguments that actually have some kind of substance, shithead, and not just a bunch of semantics baby talk. You know, who cares if somebody says uh, uh, diamagnetic instead of paramagnetic? Who, who fucking cares? Okay, um, so wrong, it's laughable. Well, that's all you keep doing. You're just a silly laughing person who doesn't provide any kind of reasonable content or anything that's meaningful. You're just a, sh a, you're a garbage eater. Uh, gullible people believe. He keeps saying this kind of crap, like, who the fuck cares? Why are you so concerned what the gullible people think? Do you really care about any of those people that ever supported, like, Superior Mind or any of these other people? Do you really care what they think? Are they that important to you? There's maybe, what, ten people who have made positive comments on my video? Does that shock you and it just disturbs you terribly? I mean, you're just so full of shit. 
Make a fucking argument, you little coward. Ugh. He knows that he is talking about because he is very convincing. So this is more argument. What's convincing? Oh, well, the fact that it's really simple, okay, then it, and it explains physics without a bunch of fairies and gremlins. I mean, why don't you tell us what you believe in, you shithead? What kind of gremlins do you believe in? What kind of little angels and little kind of fairy princesses? What kind of little pixies? Okay, he certainly has the gift of gab. Whatever this horse shit means. This is all just such bullshit. Okay, it's ridiculous, he says. So he doesn't really explain any of this. This, His physics pygmy. You know, what, what, what the hell? Is, so this is all you have are these cheap, silly, stupid fucking insults? I mean, you know, and like people couldn't just attack the fuck out of how you look and how you talk. No, but they don't waste their time doing that. Why don't you just make a stand-up argument? Why don't you just grow up and grow some balls and make your fucking claim about what you think reality is? Look at all this shit, he typed. All right, so he spends the first fucking... I mean, I try to watch his video, and it's a waste of my goddamn time because he spends the first part of the video that's supposed to be doing all this stuff, this... this Lens law, paramagnetism, diamagnetism. He hasn't said anything about any of these subjects. Didn't play any of the video that he's actually showing in this stupid clip, which is really retarded. Um, you know, not that it wouldn't have been retarded to sit there and make arguments about clearly a, a subject I was still drafting on. All right, so we'll do some paramagnetic and all that kind of stuff. All right, so I don't like the idea... I like the idea of something being called, let's say, paramagnetic or diamagnetic to describe an effect. So, um, but yes, those really are irrelevant to this, the main subject. So the thing that's the interesting fact is you can take a big hunk of copper or a big hunk of aluminum, a block, and then you can swing a magnet into it, and the magnet will slow down and stop. It won't hit the object, okay? <laughs> As it's moving, it, there's a... A counter force to the magnetic field. So this is this is the north side of the magnet. Say, it will repel that north side, okay, and stop the magnet from hitting the copper or the aluminum. So that's Lenz law. And so it's you could also understand it that that's exactly the same kind of force that's in effect when you take a magnet and you shove it into a coil of wire. You're basically doing the same thing. And the thing to understand is, is why is that happening? Not just to say Lenz Law, okay? That doesn't say anything about how, why it's happening. That just says some magical crap about, well, a current is created and this happens and that happens. Well, what happens when a current's created in a wire? That's my whole argument. What the fuck is actually happening in a wire when there's such a thing as a current or electricity? Um, that's the important part of the subject, and that's the part you're just ignoring. That's the part I'm trying to get to anyway, butthole. Um, and so I sort of pointed out the whole, the whole function of when you're putting electricity through a wire is the fact of how many atoms you affect. And so I, I've argued that voltage, okay, is the amount of pressure, uh, you know, and that amperage is how many atoms did you affect with the pressure. So that's the key understanding how electricity goes through wires is understanding that if you have high pressure you affect fewer atoms and <clears throat> what you really want to do is affect as many as possible when you're trying to create the uh, Lenz law the magnetic effect so if you want a magnetic effect you have to try to get all of these atoms involved they all have to become polarized all right and that will give you a magnetic consequence, you know, creating a north-south or whatever. Um, so if you want to magnetize the wire, high voltage won't do you any good. You need high amperage. You need to force a lot of atoms to move, to, to um, change their shape, you know, from that to this, let's say. You know, that, that's the real argument. What you're doing is changing the shape of atoms. And by changing their shape, you change their polarity. And now they have a, a magnet, a north side and a south side, a proton, an electron side and a, and a proton side. And so that's the difference between amperage and, and uh, voltage is uh, voltage is the 
the pressure can, a lot of pressure can move through very few atoms at high voltage and high amperage means you have to move a lot of a you have to move a lot of electrons and so you can't just move a few electrons fast you have to move a lot of electrons they'll move slower and, and the fact is but you'll involve a lot more atoms and change the shape of a lot more atoms so anyway so I'd argue that Lenz law is doing the same thing as that and so I associate that with paramagnetism and diamagnetism and trying to understand repulsion and attraction but it's a completely different thing so just ignore that I ever use the word paramagnetic or diamagnetic because the effects of that are so so slight they mean nothing so it's really just about this idea that they're saying a current is created and the current is causing the point is is that when this magnet swings into okay this object it has to swing in at a certain speed if it goes in slow there's no effect and what that means essentially is is that these atoms don't have to be changed in their shape to transfer the energy they have time so the atoms stays the atoms all stay the right shape because they basically just move the whole atom moves here and this whole atom moves here or this whole atom moves here they rearrange the atoms in their shape but if I move it fast they can't do that and that's when you start changing the shape of the atoms and when you change their shape and you, you know you end up creating polarity in the sense that these become electron weak and these become you know you could say proton electron doesn't really matter but they polarize and when they polarize that's when they become magnetic that's when they end up having a north and a south face and they can have two of those actually but it doesn't really matter right, for the point of this argument so it's really just speed dependent so what you're really arguing is that you're moving electrons and protons but you, they can't move fast enough okay in the substance they don't they don't move fast enough their drift velocity is too slow and because their drift velocity is too slow because you're trying to move too many at once they end up creating uh, something that has a polarity so I could sort of describe it like um, say if you had atoms and they have electrons spaced around them at a certain distance and what you're basically doing is compressing that distance you're pushing the electrons in and when you push the electrons in what you're essentially doing is compacting the density of their space that is you're making electrons that were this far apart and you're making those electrons this far apart so you're increasing their density which means they have more charge and so that's the repulsive force so when you're pushing them in they're pushing into the protons they're pushing into you know so they're compacting they're becoming more dense and if, if the electrons are more dense okay then their capacity to create a an opposite magnetic effect they're basically just saying we're a bunch of electrons now we're they're going to look like they're even more electrons so you know this number of electrons can look like twice that number if they're closer together and that's essentially what you're doing you're compressing them because they can't just balance out all the atoms can't just balance out so you end up just compressing the electrons and that's why you have the repulsion then once the magnet's sitting here for a minute well it's a conductor so all of that balances out all the electrons are communicating with each other the uh, pressure settles that down and all the electrons go back to an even amount of distance between them and so it becomes nothing inert then if I pull it away real quick I'm doing exactly the opposite right I'm pulling the electrons away from the atoms now so they become neutral again but now I'm going to pull them away and when I'm pulling them away I'm making them less dense right so again we have this density argument of which way are they going to go when they're connected to a proton here and a proton here and a proton here if I pull an electron away the way it's going to go is away okay it's going to go they're going to spread and as they spread okay they become less dense and that less density means this thing becomes positive 
I'm pulling the electrons away from the protons. They're covering less of the protons now. The protons are more visible now. And um, so now this becomes positive. And so then it attracts to this negative surface. And therefore, it will pull this thing this way. So if I pull this magnet away really quickly, really quickly pull it away, that this thing will move with it. And if I push it in really fast, then this thing will repel and move away and vice versa. So if I use the south pole, the same thing is happening. It's just the opposite effect in the sense that now you're, um, you know, compressing the protons and separating the protons and you can have this make the same argument or your inverse of that, you're separate, you're pulling the electrons away when you're pushing in, which means that you're making the protons stronger. And then when you're pushing away, pulling away, you're um, the electrons are going the opposite direction and pulling away with the positive. Now, now you're pulling the electrons away. Yes, well, the electrons are ending up closer to the the south pole. Well, anyway, it's just the inverse, so it should work out just fine. But anyway, so that's a real mechanical explanation. Now, if you're going to compete with me or or argue that I'm full of nonsense, you have to explain how that doesn't work. Now, this isn't about atoms, okay, and that the atom has a electron and proton balance, that the forces repelling, okay, are counterbalancing the forces attracting, and that that's the nature of the atom, and that if I change the shape of that atom, okay, <laughs> if I distort it by p putting pressure on an electron, um, that that's what's going to happen. If I push on this electron, I pull that electron away, and I push that electron away, and that consequently this one ends up going in, actually. Eh. All right, and that's the reality of it, okay, that something like that happens to atoms, and once they do that, they become polar. They become essentially a north and a south, and uh, or north and a south even in this direction. You know, north this way and south that way. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the point is that they're polar. And now they can have an effect on the... Like as if they were a magnetic atom. But their shape is not their normal shape. It's not their balanced shape. And they will try to get back to their equilibrium. And that the whole point is, is that if I move the magnet fast enough, I can break the shape of the atoms because the electrons can't move fast enough. They just can't physically do it fast enough. They are, they, even though they move the speed of light in little pieces, they only move in little pieces. You know, they go and then they stop and they go and they stop, they go and they stop. So they can't move fast enough to compensate, to adjust to the, to, to the change. It ends up changing the shape of the atom and by changing the shape of the atom, you make it magnetic for that period of time. It's distorted. All right, and when it gets to the whole charge, this was more like a charge experiment. So the, the complication with charge, I, mean, I have explained this, but I'll, I haven't done it in, a, in too many videos because it was sort of a new realization. Um, but the truth is that all magnets are, again, conductors. They're made out of metal, okay? There's no non-metal um, permanent style type magnet. Um, they're, all ma they're all iron, cobalt, or nickel, you know, one of these metals. And the problem is, is when something's charged, so if I have a magnet uh, doing its magnetic thing, which I've explained what the magnet is, you know, the one force goes in and comes out this end, the other force comes out that end, blah, 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 blah. Um, that function, if I put a charge here in the atmosphere, what's going to happen is the charge is going to charge the metal, the surface of the metal. And when it charges the surface of the metal, it breaks the magnet. The magnet doesn't work anymore. So it just becomes a charged piece of iron. Um, you know, if I influence it with a large enough charge, the charge merely ends up creating the opposite charge on the metal and um, the surface, and that breaks the filter. That breaks the magnetic filter, and so the magnet stops being a magnet. And that's why charges, large charges, screw magnets up. But little charges, like electrons, they still get moved away. So it can, it's still, small charges can't 
charge in a magnet, but big charges can charge the magnet. So all the big charges always cause the magnet to fail. And so that's why there's a little bit of a, like there's, that's why you can't just move a charge with a magnet. I can't take something that's a charged ball that has 2,000 volts on it. I can't just push a magnet into it and move the charged ball because the charged ball will charge the magnet and by charging the magnet, it'll break the magnet. And this probably can be proven in some way by putting an insulator. So this would be a good experiment. Put an insulator in, you know, in front of the magnet, a non-metal insulator, and then stick a little ball to it. Then expose it to a charge because well, then the problem is, is this is going to charge opposite this. So this will end up, well, it probably won't matter what charge it has on it. But the interesting part to see is, is if you bring a charge in association with this magnet, what happens to the steel ball that's connected to it? If it falls off, then I'm right. Okay. And if it stays stuck, then there's probably something else that has to be explained. Because technically it should be able to charge both these objects because of the insulator. It'll charge this one opposite. So this one will become south. This one becomes, say if this is a north, it's a rep repulsive to electrons. This side will charge north, and this side will charge south. But, but how it charges shouldn't affect it any. Any charge is going to break the, the magnet, so any, acquiring any strong charge would break it. So obviously this has to, the magnet has to be insulated. Yeah, but that should. I haven't seen that experiment done, so that would be interesting to see if that actually happens. That the magnet ceases to be a magnet and ends up just being charged, and it won't have enough charge to hold the other steel ball, so it'll fall off. All right. So that's an experiment for some future date. I wish I, you know, I'd like to do some of those experiments, but it's hard to, I can, you know, I am in a basement and uh, it's a little hard to get the humidity uh, low enough to do any charge experiments. Static charge, anyway. All right, so enough of video. We'll get back to just doing the subjects and uh, the comments are just so disappointing. Uh, it's just nothing to say. Again, I'm just really not doing this for the public's benefit. Uh, it's a challenge to physicists. I'm claiming they have very little integrity. And the people supporting conventional physics obviously have very little integrity. Very little will to make a rational argument defending their religion. And it is, in my opinion, obviously a religion. Um, they're creating fake evidence in they can't even explain a two-slit experiment honestly. They'll talk about uh, measuring spin when they're doing entanglement uh, experiments. The entanglement experiment is measuring polarization. It's not measuring anything spin. So it's just a horseshit. They say the photons have spin. Where's your evidence that a photon has a spin? Where did they ever do a spin experiment on a photon? It's just such a lie to say they're measuring a property when they're clearly measuring its polarization. <laughs> I mean, it's there's just so much bullshit in it. So much bullshit. And not one of them can show up to have an honest uh, conversation. All they can do is this cheap shot, slandery crap. This gutless wonder, you know, who post all these comments on, on fucking Farley's videos. You think it, there's somebody else besides Farley who's created a fake account called draft science with a fake icon and you support that kind of nonsense you stupid little creep so if a bunch of people made fake Stephen bro uh, 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 accounts and they typed big long idiotic uh, comments to look like your comments you know and pretended to be you and then said all kinds of shit you'd say that's fine you know I don't think you would you stupid piece of crap you trolly piece of shit so anyway, I still have to play all of this. It's just, it's almost impossible to listen to. The, the only test is this, or it's impossible to, I don't know, you will have an excuse. That's your talent, Gary. Making excuses, dodging. Yeah, this is such a bullshit. I said right from the beginning, the whole point of doing the fucking radar experiment, okay, was to prove 
one way or the other between jamming okay and interference the math for the two things is exactly the same all right so there's no way to do it mathematically you have to do an experiment that demonstrates where you're proving its interference and you're disproving that it's jamming so the whole that was the whole point of the experiment he didn't understand that was the whole point of the experiment and that was my whole purpose in doing the experiment so we just did the conventional experiment which proved nothing you have to do it some different way the conventional experiment doesn't demonstrate the difference between jamming and interference so obviously you have to create an experiment that's capable of um, picking up on the differences that would be created by the two different circumstances and obviously if I'm saying the photons can't possibly be destroyed they still have to be hitting all the surfaces because nothing is interfering with them nothing is breaking them they're not going through slits so they have to be whole photons hitting the surface and the only thing stopping you from seeing is that there's two signals out of phase so the power the energy is still hitting the surface there's still real microwaves hitting the surface so you should be able to detect that that was the point of the experiment you couldn't figure out well not that you tried to figure it out like I said you've already kind of admitted that the whole point of you doing the experiment was to prove Lewin right not to prove him wrong so you know you were you were riding false colors in the whole interaction you were the liar right from the start so anyway Ugh. So sorry, unpleasant video, but it has to be done now and then. <laughs> uh, yes, it has to be done all the time. Apparently, that's why I, I think I just make subject videos. Try not to interact. No point in interacting. You know, until somebody who can make a real physics argument shows up. Some physicists can explain how two waves can make the double slitted pattern. Yeah. Let's see him do that. Anyway, till next time and such. <laughs>